I love the creative side of our business, not so much the technical side, and that's where Squarespace comes in. I'd like to thank them for sponsoring today's video. This is one of the most used platforms to creating a beautiful website, making it easy for you to sell your creative idea. You can use their ready to use templates, which are simple to customize and link to your social media. Squarespace is offering the Elliott Homestead community a free trial of their services and 10% off a purchase of a website or a domain. So click the link below the video or visit squarespace.com forward slash Elliott Homestead to get started with the amazing website building services they have to offer. I used to think that creativity was like a wind, rushing through the branches and causing chaos at its own will. As a creative, my job was simply to sit and observe when the wind was coming and to ride its coattails, hoping I was able to grab some of the leaves in its wake. But this idea that creativity was a wind, well, that idea was challenged, once again, by a book. I stumbled across this book, The Artist's Way by Julia Cameron, just a few months ago. It's an older book, over 25 years old now, and much of it is counter to the way that I see the world. As my father-in-law says, you gotta take in the meat and spit out the bones. But regardless of some of my challenges with the book, I found Miss Cameron's take on creativity to be positively inspired and just what I was needing. Miss Cameron spends most of the beginning of the book convincing the reader that creativity is certainly not a wind blowing when and where it will, but rather she argues that through a manner of habits and disciplines, the artist, any artist, regardless of what their art form is, is able to create the winds of creativity themselves. Now that's an intriguing concept. Does this actually mean that I can make creativity happen? And that creativity and those beautiful energies that flow through your veins and have to come out isn't something that just happens to me, but that I actually cultivate it? There's much too much information in the artist's way to summarize it in such a short and small video. But still, I find myself clinging to many of its principles daily in my studio.
turns out, the artist doesn't have to be a complete wreck of emotion or make a complete tangle of all their circumstances like we're led to believe. The self-inflicted torture that many artists put on themselves to fan the flames of their creativity is, well, it's unnecessary. This is great news for me because I have four children and a farm and a wonderful husband to care for. And there's no room for tortured artists in this home. I need to be intentional, purposeful, driven, honest, and absolutely vibrant with life. Miss Cameron shapes the artist discipline like this. First, the artist gets up every day and dumps their thoughts onto paper. Paper and pen, the old fashioned way, three pages worth. The discipline of this clears the headspace needed for creativity. I found this to be very true. Oftentimes my mind is wound up in what I'm cooking for dinner or a load of laundry that needs to be done. And when it's full of those things, it's not able to be full of what I'm going to create. That doesn't give me an excuse to not do them, but it does allow me to get the thoughts out of my head and onto paper so that creativity can flow. The second discipline that Ms. Cameron talks about in the artist's way is taking yourself on an artist's date every week. Now, this doesn't need to be something expensive or glamorous, but it's meant to be a time alone with yourself to create a new energy. So whether this comes for me from going to a food market and finding an ingredient that I really want to incorporate into a still life, or maybe it's going to a nursery and seeing a new flower, taking a look at an old museum or spending some time in one of my old art books of the Dutch masters, just to have intentional time alone with yourself to feed that creativity in your mind where new ideas can come from and be born. And the third discipline is, well, it's probably the simplest and the hardest at the same time. And that's just doing the art form over and over and over and over and over again. Because naturally, when we do things over and over, we get comfortable, we get confident, we have new ideas when we're not bound up and just trying to get the basics of it done and just make it through the process but instead we start to enjoy it. We start to see things in a different way. Now, when time is limited, this is hard for the creative. Moms, I see you. People who work, I see you. I know that it's hard to prioritize creativity when everything else seems so important, but carving out that space is also important because the world needs the creativity that you have to offer. This certainly doesn't mean that every day that I'm in my studio, lightning strikes. Some days are better than others, but it does mean that I'm continually and intentionally showing up, cultivating the wind that will carry the leaves of creativity into my photographs.
Dorothy Parker says that creativity is a wild mind and a disciplined eye. So instead of waiting for the wind, I'm learning to create it. Thank you. 